Welcome to the Self-Help Coaching Podcast, where insights, attitudes, and methods for success get illuminated. Learn what leaders and change workers have done and are doing now to create magnificent futures. We interview great guests who inspire you to overcome obstacles and achieve your goals. Be sure you visit our website at self-helpcoaching.com. While you're there, subscribe to us via your favorite network. Now, just relax as you listen. You can do something else, but be ready to make an important note. And let's get started. The title of this interview is Discover Four Steps to Go from Chaos to Clarity, Achieving the Results You Want Using the CALM, C-A-L-M, Method, the CALM Method. So we'll be talking about uh, the CALM Method, which is a four-step framework to go from the chaos in your mind to clarity so you can feel motivated and empowered to take continuous aligned action. And you can also, uh, well, let me tell you who my guest is, first of all. I'm getting a little, little ahead of myself. My guest is Nikki Genjemi. She is the expert that will be talking to you about the Khan Method. And I'm really looking forward to this. She's out there in New Jersey. I'm here in Brooklyn, of course. So <laughs> this is going gonna, gonna, to be adding to the, the spice of this conversation. But she will be talking about the Khan Method. She'll also be sharing about pow- a powerful tool of hypno- hypnotherapy hypnotherapy, excuse me, to become your best self and achieve your goals. So I love that. Uh, you know, even though I'm a, I was a certified life coach, I was, I was certified by a hypnotherapy institute, you know, and she'll be, you know, well, we tell, tell you, we'll be talking about mindset, mindfulness, EFT. I learned EFT at that institute, which stands for emotional freedom technique. For those who don't know, hypnotherapy, calm, goals, success, manifestation, all that stuff. And let me tell you about Nikki Genjemi. All right. She comes, she went from actress to teacher to entrepreneur. I love that. Uh, I went from actress, from actor to entrepreneur. I omitted the teacher part, but we'll get into that later. So Nikki Genjemi knows what it takes to make those big pivots and has found a way to accelerate her success from the inside out to become the leading lady of her life. I love that. And to live it on her own terms. Oh, fantastic. Nikki is an international board certified master success coach, coach, master NLP practitioner. I love NLP. That stands for neuro-linguistic programming, master hypnotherapist, speaker, author and founder of Mindful Matters, LLC, though she calls herself a personal trainer for your mind. Great. That's a great branding. Nikki helps entrepreneurs break through the limiting beliefs that holds them back using the CALM framework, C-A-L-M, so they can feel more motivated and achieve the results they want. Mindful Matters, LLC, live happy and no, live live life happy no matter what. I love that. Welcome, Nikki. I'm looking forward to this conversation. Thank you, Tony. That was an amazing introduction, and I love your energy. Well, energy is pretty important, and oh. I, I think that not, not only do we have a lot in common, I think that you got a lot. Well, it's unique to yourself. That's very valuable, both I'm sure in your own practice, working one on one, but just sh- what we're going to talk about in, in this interview. Absolutely. Yeah, there's a energy is important. Alignment is everything. And I'm excited to have this conversation. So thank you for the opportunity. You're quite welcome. Let's get right into the meat. What's the calm method? I love I love acronym methods, especially ones that have four letters. And this obviously qualifies. So let's <laughs> let's hear about the calm method. Sure. Can I share how the calm method came about? Please. Okay, so I was supposed to do a a workshop for a jewelry company on sales mindset, and I had my workshop presentation ready to go, and two days before, I get a call from the woman who hired me, and she said, Nikki, sales mindset is no longer appropriate with everything going on. It was March 2020, and the world had just shut down, and she said, can you do something else to help these women just deal and cope with their emotions and worry and fear. And I said, sure, not a problem. Hang up the phone and I start replanning. And I'm like, coming up with nothing. So I said, I'm going to practice what I preach. I'm going to put this to bed, so to speak. I set the intention before going to bed. I will wake up with the perfect idea for these women. Went to sleep. I woke up and I literally heard the word calm 
in my head and I saw C-A-L-M. I popped up out of bed, I wrote it down and that's how the Calm Method was born. <laughs> great, that's a great origin. I mean, we love origins to where people get it in their sleep. That's that's great. And and you and you 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 did what a lot of successful people do as a as a habit. They have a pencil and paper bedside for things that come to them uh, when they sleep because the brain is still working then and it worked for you. So tell us about the calm method. Yes. So the calm method, I see it as the foundation. It's like when you're building a house, it's got to have a strong foundation to withstand life, right? And these are the basics that we just weren't taught in school. We kind of just kind of skipped over how do you manage the thoughts in your head and the emotions that you feel. So calm is that very just foundation. And I can just jump right into what it stands for, but it's basically four steps to help you to get out of your head. You know, when you're in a situation or a circumstance and you get stuck on it and it disrupts your day and you just find that your mind keeps going back to the problem and then sure. it affects you, how you show up, right? Even with the people in your life and you just can't focus on what you need to do, right? Cause you're stuck in the problem. So yeah. what calm does is it helps you just to stop and deal with it. So you stop the chaos, that negative mental loop that's going on in your mind. The C is to become conscious of how you're feeling. Conscious. Conscious, cause I find that that's the easiest uh, entry into understanding what's going on here, right? We have tens of thousands of thoughts every day. And sometimes we don't know every thought that we're thinking. It could get lost in the craziness, right? However, we always know how we're feeling if we just stop, like get off social media, turn off the TV and just tune in to you, your body. How am I feeling? What am I feeling right now? And, and put a name to it, like label it. But that's that's what's necessary, though. Yeah. We know what we're feeling, but but often it's a nebulous. But when we ask ourselves the question, when we go within and 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 name it, then we have the clarity, and with that clarity is the essential part. Exactly. Yeah. So you're naming it. You're giving it a name. You know what? You know what, Nikki? Guess what? You heard me use the word clarity. That's a c word. We're replacing consciousness with clarity. <laughs> Well, you uh, end up, clarity is a byproduct of this process. <laughs> very, very good. So you're conscious of what you're feeling by asking yourself a question, going within, continue, please, man. Mm -hmm. And then you want to just take a minute and a half to process that, right? Because okay. we're not going to ignore it. So what I tell people, I always use the example, Dr. Jill Bolte Taylor, neuroscientist, wrote the book, uh, Stroke of Insight. She had a stroke and she had to get herself back to how she was prior. And she says it takes just 90 seconds to process an emotion. Mm. So if we're in an unwanted emotion like anger or fear for longer than a minute and a half, it means you're stuck in the story. Oh. If you sit with it, Invite it in. Hello, fear. I see you. There you go. You're welcome for a minute and a half. Then you got to go. But you just, you breathe like, you know, four square breathing or five, seven, eight breathing. Just breathe and let it be there for that 90 seconds. It will dissipate. So step one is about labeling the emotion and breathing through it, allowing it to be there instead of pushing it away. Just let it be there. Okay. So let me Let's get some more clarity. You mm -hmm. just mentioned some breathing techniques, four square and five, seven, eight. Really briefly say what, what those are so people know. Sure. So four square breathing is something that they use in the military. And it's simply breathing in for a count of four and then holding it at the top for a count of four, exhaling for a count of four, and then holding it at the bottom for four. So if you could see me, I'm making a square with my right. finger. Right. And when I used to teach elementary school teacher in my former life, I did that with the kids because it was so easy. I said, you can yeah. make a square in the air on your lap. You could draw a square with your finger. And right. it's just a 16 count breath. And it really just, you know, helps to calm down that amygdala, that um, right. fight, flight, or freeze that we right. go into when we think we're chased, we're being chased by a bear or a tiger. <laughs> right. So when you have that structure, that four mm -hmm. square, then you- it's, Five, it's, seven, it's, eight is the same thing. You breathe in for five, you hold at the top for seven, and you exhale for eight. So either way, you have two great little tools there to you to you uh, using your breathing. Great. So now we're at conscious. We're breathing, we're in our feeling, we know what it is, what's next? Right, so now that the emotion has dissipated, 
Now we have access, right, to different thoughts. So A is to become aware of the thoughts that you're thinking. So what thoughts are causing the emotion? Thoughts precede emotion. What thought am I having that's causing this frustration or this anxiety or this worry? And you put it on paper, like write out each thought on paper, get it out of your head. And then when you see it in black and white on paper, now you could be a lawyer and you could put the thoughts on trial. Are these facts or are they beliefs, opinions, worries, projections, attitudes? So that's step two. Excellent. Oh, I love that. I love, I love both, but that is great because, you know, obviously, you know, I, I just had, I just did an Instagram live with Angela Lee just moments before this. And, and the topic by no coincidence was emotional healing. Uh, and we're, right now we're talking about emotions and I talked about, you know, emotions for every person is both a curse and a blessing. All right. Now for some people, it's a greater curse than others. And especially those people, especially this is much more useful for you, but for every, all of us. And the more we accept our emotions, the more we are the master of them, <laughs> right? Yes. They, so we must accept them. And if we don't, then we're going to continue to have trouble with them. So mm -hmm. you, but the awareness of them uh, is, is, well, you know, I, I use a, what I, you know, I'm, I'm a recovered drug addict. And, uh, and at the very beginning of my recovery, I realized that I had the greatest skill that I had to master and I continue to I profess it to this day is the ability to feel my feelings. Addicts are, are among the groups that are terrible with this. As a matter of fact, we're the worst at this. <laughs> maybe, maybe not the worst, but certainly that's a great critical, critical part of addiction. Addiction is a, is a fantasy game, you know, escaping the feelings that we're having, but the, the reality is we have to feel those feelings. So we, we have to identify just as you described, but we have to become willing. And then after willingness, then we can accept it. Is this okay? And once we're okay, then it'll change. But you, you, your method is similar and and it's completely with merit. Uh, but my method is for feeling feelings, especially for an addict or any person who does it has a problem feeling your feelings. Yours is getting clear so that you can become calm, I think, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, you want to feel the feelings. And that's something that we really weren't given permission to do when we were kids. I mean, how many times were you told, move on, get over it, lots of people have it worse, right? It wasn't okay to feel. So now like what I'm saying, and it's not just me, right? Other people have said this too, but it's okay, feel the feelings, process, L allow them to Absolutely. process. Listen, emotions are just energy emotion einstein e energy right energy and motion is all an emotion is yep we've given meaning to it like they could be good or bad i love abraham hicks um says that emotions are not good or bad it's just an indicator of where your attention is so when you're feeling an unwanted emotion it just means you're not focused on what you want or you're Absolutely. out of alignment with what you want so be be a navigation system and recalculate Fantastic. Okay, now listen, we went, we covered C, we covered A. We're not going to get into L and M just yet. We're going to have a commercial break because <laughs> I don't want to, I want L and M to get all the Jew, the due justice they deserve. Uh, and uh, so we're going to have a commercial break. We'll have a moment to hear from our sponsor and we'll come back right with Nikki Gemmy and L and M in the Calm Method. Great stuff. This episode of Self Help Coaching is brought to you by Perficio. Ever heard of accelerated learning techniques? What if you learned more deeply than ever before? What if you remembered what you learned far better than ever before? Visit www.proficio.io. That's proficio.io, where you can understand perhaps better than ever before. You're well, listening to the Self-Help Coaching Podcast with me, your host, Tony Petroza. We're having a fantastic conversation with Nikki Ganjemi. She's talking about her calm method. She already covered C and A, which is conscious and aware. Now we're getting into L and then M after that. So Nikki, what do you got? Yes. Okay, Tony. So the L is lean into what else is possible. I Once you just, yeah. Once you've decided that the thoughts you put on trial in step two, the A, are not facts or true, that they are a belief, worry, opinion, or projection, now you get to reframe them, which is just putting a different frame around a thought so that it can mean something different. 
And that's where in that step, I get into using some coaching and NLP tools and tapping, like you mentioned in the beginning, to really help to change and create a new belief, right? Like what else might be true? What else is possible? Right. So really to, to tackle to tackle the, the cause uh, with, with some resilience and some wherewithal uh, and really ability. Uh, and I love this. You know, I have a friend, another coach, he's out in Long Island. Uh, he's been at it for some time, you know, he's from the ICF. His company is called Lean Into Life. And that, and that, that is very reminiscent of what you're talking about here. And this, I think, is just about not shrieking from whatever it is before you or within you, but dealing with it. And you, uh, as you just enumerated, there are numerous tools that you can do, use to do that. Oh, absolutely. There's so many tools, right? Um, so calm can act like a tool or a framework, right? And then you can use other tools, like I said, tapping or hypnosis. Uh, so that's, yeah, that's the, yeah, that's the reframing part where you're just looking at what else isn't true. And I'd like to, when I, after I do M, just give a, a, an example so we can make this tangible of what it looks like to go through the C-A-L-M. Um, so that's step three, reframing it. What else might it mean? And this is where those negative thoughts are now, you're just moving up the, the, the ladder to higher uh, vibration thoughts, thoughts that feel better. Yes. And are more in alignment with what you want. They help you to focus on those goals that you have. And you naturally start feeling better because you're seeing things differently, right? This is where your perspective starts to open up. And you're like, wow, I didn't notice that before. Yeah. Well, what you're doing is you're taking the person from effect to cause, which is a mm -hmm. basic tenant of NLP. Yeah. You know, most people live in effect when they, where if they change that, they pivot to cause they have a much different experience, right? So they had an effect, but now they, they, they can change it. They can, they can deal with it. They can learn about it. They can become the cause and not just the effect. Exactly. And it could sting a little bit sometimes. You know, one question I'll ask myself and even clients is, how am I at cause for this? Or how, you know, asking you, how are you at cause for this? And it could be like, what? Like you could get into a defensive mode, but on the other side of that, there's true freedom. Right. It's kind of like it puts you back in the driver's seat. It's like, OK, this is the circumstance. What can I do about this where I'm at with the resources that I have? So it's actually empowering. Totally. Right. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> so that, <laughs> step Great. Three. And then the M step four. M We've step been waiting four. for this M, Nikki. I know. <laughs> but, <laughs> but no, not you know, perfectly. I mean, this is everything you said is every word has been awesome saying so, quite necessary uh there's been not a not a not one extra word so I, I meant that with due respect so tell us about m m yes the m is make a new decision Woo! what's Woo! your new choice she went there she went there <laughs> <laughs> right you i mean we're making decisions constantly from the moment our eyes open do I hit snooze one more time? Get out of bed, right? Like now, now, now she's talking to me. <laughs> I know I'm a snoozer myself. So like, you know, all these decisions, right? And a lot of the decisions we make limit us. They're called limiting decisions. Here's where we can make an empowering decision. Here it's like I get to choose what's the new decision that I want to make. And now that you, you're thinking those higher level thoughts, we're more like first class thoughts, now you're gonna decide something. So it's making that new decision and then immediately stepping into action. Right. It feels, it's gotta feel good, right? It's oh, absolutely, good. So how, but how, do, how does it help you handle life situations? I mean, you just went into the specificity of, and, and, and the technique and then a general, general uh, outcome, but, what about some specificity? How, how does it, how does this method help you handle life situations with some specifics? Mm -hmm. Yep. So I'll give an example just to make this sure. tangible. So you can use the calm method anytime you notice that you just get stuck on a situation or a circumstance that you're in. And it, you can't just kind of forget about it and move on with your day. You let it get to you and you're feeling this unwanted emotion. So one example that I always share is this woman, she's a coach, 
you know, working from home. Her kids were home from college. This was during the height of the pandemic. And she was trying to do her work in her office and the, the college age kids kept coming in, mom, let's, why don't we bake bread? Like they were, they were, you know, interrupting her. And so she was feeling frustrated and a little bit resentful. That was the C conscious of how she was feeling. Then we went into A, what thoughts are causing you to feel that uh, frustration and resentment? And she said, well, they don't respect what I do. Mm. Maybe I should get a real job. They wouldn't be doing this if I actually had, you know, that she was calling it a real job. So we look, put those thoughts on trial. Are those facts? Do they really not respect your work? Is this really not a real job that you're doing that you're getting paid for? And, you know, she started, and of course we processed the emotion. We did a little bit of breath work and um, she said, you know what, actually L, the reframing, she said, I'm actually lucky to be a mom with college age kids that want to spend time with me and hang out with me. How great is that? You know, and she started to feel grateful instead. Like I have this time with my kids. Normally they would be away at college. So uh, she just shifted her perspective and M, her new decision. Um, she just said right now in this moment, I choose to let this go. I'm going to spend time. They want to go in the kitchen and bake. Let's do it. And because I am a business owner, I get to work when I choose. So she felt a lot more empowered after that. So she, fantastic. So she reframed, she reframed. Right, which is a basic NLP technique, which is basically, okay, this means this, but what else could it mean? And exactly. that's, what, you know, and you, which you articulated. Uh, I don't want to steal your thunder. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, very good. And, but, but she had to do some preliminary work first, which is to become conscious you know, as you as you as you said, the con comment is become conscious, to become aware, to lean into it using some. You can use some tool, or with the, could it be just be a reframe, and then make the new decision, which is the M. Yeah, we did a little tapping. That was another secondary tool that we used. Okay, talk about EFT. Yeah, emotional freedom technique. It's been described like that. It's acupressure for your emotions. Mm. Right. So acupuncture, they put the needles or pins, whatever, on the meridian points of the body to heal physical pain. And when you lightly tap with your fingers on those meridian points, you help to heal emotional pain. You help to process the emotion. Um, it helps to install new beliefs. I mean, tapping is just so many positive uh, effects when you do it. You become more resilient in the process. You actually train your brain to shift from what's not working what I don't like, what I don't want to, what is working and what can I do with the resources that I have? And this is a very powerful technique, uh, EFT tapping. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I mentioned the, uh, the Hypnosis Institute, which certified me as a life coach, which is the paper is, I'm, I'm not going to say, anything. listen, a coach, either you're a good coach or a bad coach, whatever certification you got is basically meaningless, uh, more or less. <laughs> uh, all right. And, um, but at, at, at Melissa Tears, who is, is in Manhattan, her, her school is the Integrated Hypnosis Institute, I think. And that's where I, I, I got certified. And she, I had already been introduced to it, but she taught, taught EFT because it's such a useful tool. And I talked to her about this. And she, she's well-recognized as an author, hypnotherapist, trainer, and all that. And she talk, talked to me about EFT. I said, you know, is this, how much hype is here? She goes, Tony... You know, the, the NLP, one of the things that NLP became famous for was the uh, the fast phobia cure, right? The VAK disassociation where a person, basically speaking, imagines themselves being in a theater, watching themselves uh, with the, the, the trauma or the thing that they want to change and they can get empowered to disassociating uh, doubly, uh, imagining themselves watching themselves. And then you can use some uh, other modality work to, uh, to change it. Okay, and she goes, well, B, she, she said that EFT is even more powerful than the VAK, VAK double disassociation. That's how powerful, that's how useful, that's how effective it is. It's so effective. I'll just tell you this very quickly. When I, yes. I was introduced to EFT through a therapist hmm. and I started doing it religiously. And for a long time, I was not able to forgive myself for, uh, there was a period of 13 years when I didn't speak to my brother 
I wouldn't have a relationship with him at all. And I gave myself a lot of grief over that for how mm -hmm. bad of a person I was for acting that way. In two weeks of doing tapping on the story that I kept myself in for all those years, right. I was able to completely forgive myself and realize there was a reason why I did that. And, um, and once I understood that it wasn't because I was a bad person, it was my way of feeling that I had control over something I mean, it was like I lost 70 pounds of emotional baggage and I just felt so much more free. And I was like, wow, that was just two weeks of 10 minutes a day. That's it. 10 minutes of tapping a day. And here you already were a professional coach, right? At this point, I was not a professional coach. Oh, you were not. Uh, okay. This was, I was in, I was seeing a therapist. Okay. I, uh, I had been in, in that therapy on and off in my life for 15 years. Mm. And this therapist was my last one. And she was different. She introduced me to mindfulness and breathing and EFT. And for the first time, the negative thoughts that were constantly on a mental loop, they slowed down enough that there was, I felt a gap in between. And that's where I was like, oh my God, I could breathe. I didn't realize I wasn't breathing for the first 35 years of my life. <laughs> yeah. You know, for many years now, perhaps 30 years or more, more and more, you know, actual therapists, like degreed psychologists, LCSWs, uh, learning the, the, the tools of our craft, hypnotherapy, EFT, coaching, more and more becoming coach certified or not. Because mm -hmm. coaching, you know, therapy has its own great area. And coaching has its own great areas, uh, and uh, and the the both is is fantastic. And yes, what you do, you do you do hypnotherapy, uh, you do coaching, uh, uh, and so uh, you know you, I'm sure that any client who came to you could get the outcomes that they're looking for. I think you seem to be someone who has a great competency. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. You know what? They can get the outcomes they want if they have the awareness and the willingness. Some people, you know, if, if you bring something to their attention and they don't want to see it, they could shut right down and be like, no, nope, I don't want to hear it, you know, and can't help them. They've you know, I to... mentioned, go on. No, it was just that they, they, they've got to have the awareness and then be willing to want it to be different and open to change. I mentioned previously that I was a recovered drug addict, you know, and, and what I, what I learned um, at the the beginning of my recovery, the, the early years, is that the most important, you know, in, in recovery, and I, I, and I, you know, I have great gratitude for Alcoholics Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous, which I went to and it was useful. I'm not a member anymore, but they have a lot of great value. I, and I would, I would recommend them, but I would also tell a person about the minefield and how to avoid the mines. Uh, but that said, they, they, those groups emphasize the acronym. There's a three letter acronym, yeah. how. Honest, open-minded, and willingness. Great, great. And the reason why most people who never get clean who need to get clean is they can't get honest. But beside that, let's get into the most important aspect for addiction recovery and what you just talked about. And that is willingness. Without the willingness, doesn't matter how honest or even open-minded you are, doesn't matter what other tools you may have or other great notions or principles, without the willingness, you ain't gonna have shit. <laughs> all right because you are not going to go to the hurdles you are not going to take the steps you are not going to when every, any resistance comes any difficulty that's it i gave it a shot <laughs> you've got to be willing because nothing in life is easy life's a bitch life is not is not life is difficult for everyone people oh but i was only rich no 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 even the richest people got their cross to bear all right mm -hmm. life is not easy and you've got to be willing to to, you know, to take the hits and go to what's difficult to get what you want. And that's something that people need to know. And even when you have great tools or have a great coach uh, or professional that, that someone hires like you, they still got to be willing to do the work. They have to be willing to do the work and they've got to be willing to, to be open to what's on the other side of that, yeah. right? There, I'll give one example. There was a client I was working with uh, who had such anxiety in, in different areas of his life. And I remember there was this one day when he said to me, who, who will I be without the anxiety? Anxiety has had a seat at the kitchen table. 
uh, for decades. Yep. There was fear. Like, I don't, I know this, I know this beast, but I don't know what's on the other side. And it's like a familiar zone. Somebody that I remember, I can't think of the name who called it a familiar zone rather than a comfort zone because our comfort zone zones are not necessarily comfortable. They're just what we know. And our brains are wired for habit. We that's want a, That's yeah. a wonderful discernment. And, and, and let's get into that when we, after this commercial break because because I because that's a, a great topic. But I love that articulation between comfort zone and familiar zone. That's great stuff. And I often say this, all the magic happens in the discomfort zone but uh, there's a lot to be said about the unfamiliar zone, but though that often has a lot of fear involved, you know, that typically has fear. Oh, I go with what I know, but and I'm willing to make some risks, some changes, but you know how, even if we, we think we know, which is typical, you know, what we think we know, but that may be, which is a kind of a, a self delusion, you know, because in, in, I found, you know, I read this, you know what? I don't want to get into it now because well, when I come back from the break, maybe I will talk about Neil Donald Walsh's book. Have you the uh, Conversations with God? Have you know this? Book? I've heard of the book. I haven't read it yet. It's a classic. Yeah, I, I read it. It, that was that was one of the most instrumental books I've ever read in the nineties. But let's take a moment to hear from our sponsor, and we'll come back with the great Nikki Genjemi. This episode of Self Help Coaching is brought to you by Perficio. When Ben Franklin arrived in Philadelphia, all he had was 10 cents in his pocket. Despite this, he became America's first self-made man. Visit www.perficio.io. That's P-E-R-F-I-C-I-O dot I-O to actually have the knowledge and principles of Ben Franklin transferred into yourself. You're listening to the Self-Help Coaching Podcast with me, your host, Tony Petrozzo. We're having it. A- awesome conversation with Nikki again, Jimmy. Nikki, I gotta tell you, I'm delighted with this discussion. I think it's so organic, yet valuable for the listener. You're giving very um, tangible tools to people, great, valuable stuff they can use. And I'm delighted. I, I, I'm very entertained and amused and I'm, I'm learning too. So I thank you very much. <laughs> Dear woman, very good. You're welcome. Thank you. I could talk about this stuff all day, every yeah, day. Yeah, my damn Tony. <laughs> I can see we are we are personal development people. That's mm-hmm. quite obvious, and uh, you know, and I uh, I sometimes say that you know, yeah, I've got those certifications and the experience when I was a life coach, but any person who commits to personal development is a personal developer, and they if they have a true commitment then those person, that person can share a lot about it because it takes the, that commitment is the, is the critical thing. So if you can, if you can have that commitment yourself, you can share about it. That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> and most people won't commit to it. There's that, where's that fear of failure? Where are you at? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I mentioned Neil Donald Walsh's book, Conversation with God in the previous segment. And this is one of the, one, in my opinion, one of the greatest self-help books there is. In that book, Walsh, uh, contends that he speaks with God, and I don't doubt him. Uh, I think anyone can speak with God. You know, you just got to open up the ears. Um, and God, you know, and God uh, tells Walt that there's only two things in life: concept and experience. And I have found this to be totally true. Is that I, okay? Let me think about how something's going to be that I want or don't want or whatever that I haven't experienced. It's just a concept. When I actually go and experience it, I find out that the concept had little to no resemblance to the experience of it. <laughs> it's like, wow, it's nothing like I thought it would be. I mean, like nothing. I'm so, I was so far off. <laughs> so, that, and so when we get into ideas about what's familiar, what's unfamiliar, we can have a concept about it, but it's just a concept. And go on, you're gonna say, you're gonna yeah, say. Something. No, I'm I'm just shaking my head. Yes, because I'm agreeing with you. It's like it's a concept in our mind, yet right. it feels so real. And isn't it nice when we finally experience what's outside of that yeah. that we have in our mind? And it's like, wow, this is not at all what I thought or what I right. expected. If only I had allowed this to happen sooner. <laughs> right. And you know, like when I was when I was coaching people. You know, sometimes a client would say, oh, yeah, you know, if I just if I accomplish these goals, I'll be happy. I'm like, OK, well, that's the first thing we're going to work on is getting you happy now. OK, because first of all, almost most probably getting accomplishing the goal is not going to make you happy. All right. Most probably. Number one. But number two, even if it did, 
we need to get you happy now because you get happy now. One, you, you're going to be happy with me, uh, but more importantly, be happy with yourself. All right. Accomplishing goals. If you're looking at accomplishing goals to make you happy, man, you're in a fool's bet. You're right. Exactly. <laughs> because it may not, it's not even going to be like you thought it would be, as we just talked about. Right. Yeah. It's like, how can you be happy now? And here's a one little NLP thing. It's like just changing the one word. If I accomplish this goal, then I'll be happy when I accomplish this goal, like presupposing success. Right. It's a done deal. When I accomplish this goal. Exactly. Yeah, be happy first. I, I, yeah, I, <laughs> be happy to, now. I, have, I have to modify that. You can, right. You can get this and that. But you got to get happy now because you know what? Life's too short. We can get you on the on the way to the goal, which is, and it's, at the, it's the cliche. It's in the pursuit. It's actually true. Uh, but, you know, and you can get whatever you're going to experience. We can use well-formed outcomes and NLP or whatever, how it's going to be and that you, when you recognize, to recognize the goal. However, life's too short. You can, you know, you could be doing, you could be hitting, you know, firing on all cylinders as you pursue a goal and then cross the street and get hit by a bus. Uh, and, and so it's, you know, let, let's, let's not, let's not put all our eggs in that basket. Let's get some eggs in today. All right. Exactly. Right. Yeah, we, we only have right now this moment, right? That's, that's That's the only true reality. I yeah. you and I both well know. Uh, yeah. Reality comes one moment at a time, but it, the only time it's ever really real is this moment. Oh wait, no wait, this moment. Oh wait, this moment. Oh wait, oh wait. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Every moment is the new reality and the previous one is over, it's a memory. The future one is still will always be in the future because it's always now. <laughs> That's right, it's all, now is all we have and we're creating our future with our nows. Absolutely, the best, yeah. the best way to predict and shape the future is what you're doing right friggin' now. Mm -hmm. and, and I love this calm method. Got to tell you, Nikki, I'm loving this calm method for being in the now and changing what's going on now so that you can be more effective and more present. I love it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and more happy, right? More resilient. The more you practice calm, you're just training your brain. to. It's just changing focus. Whoops. I notice I'm focusing on what I don't want. Okay. That's not true. Those are not facts. What is true? What else is possible? It's a shift in focus. It's like the metaphor of the train track. When you notice that you're going down the wrong track, you, as the conductor of your life, get to switch tracks and move in the direction that's aligned with the outcomes that you want. The I like that. The conductor metaphor. I like that one. Yeah. Very good. I uh, love metaphors. Oh, met metaphors are very useful. That's uh, we think in metaphors very often. Yeah. <laughs> you, I hear it all the time. I'll hear my, and I listen for that. Like when I'm talking to a client, I've, I'm juggling so many things. I've got too much on my plate. You know, it's just metaphor after metaphor. There's this British snilper, this guy in NLP. I can't remember his name offhand, but he, one of his, he's famous for this model. He wrote a couple, he's an author too, called Metaphors of Movement. Uh, I can't remember right now. I lost took my tongue, but, uh, and, uh, and, in it, he talks about how metaphors, how we think when, when a person talks, they'll they'll tell you their, their metaphors. And if you can just start talking with them in the same language of that metaphor, you know, if they're talking about, say, trains, start talking to them about train metaphors or, or, or maybe maybe that's just one aspect of the metaphor. But whatever their metaphors are, if you can get into that the language of that metaphor, you know, they're talking about, you know, whether, how, how they, you know, they, they they feel like they're, they're trapped. You know, I'm trapped. Mm -hmm. Okay, get into that metaphor, right? They're, I mean, obviously they're not really trapped, but in their mind they're trapped. Yeah. So how can they be released from the trap? How can they get out of the, uh, is that is that a claustrophobic thing? No, no, it's not that kind of trap. It's like, like I feel like my foot's caught. Okay, well, can you open up that snare? You know, you get into their <laughs> language because we, they, you know, we are subjective creatures. People, there's no, one fits all we are individuals absolutely and it feels really good when you use somebody else's language it's kind of like when you say one of the the sweetest sounds in the world is your name you know so while you're talking i always <laughs> use it in business i always go you know because and hey, i i don't see that as mere technique i know when someone calls my name i like the sound of it you know mm -hmm. is it narcissistic no but you know it's it's you know, I, I say this to my girlfriend sometimes, and, and she, you know, she, we all have our needs, 
The most basic human need is acknowledgement. Mm -hmm. That is the most basic human need. Just for you to know, let me, when you let me know that you realize that I'm alive, that fills a need for me, you know? Now, some people have a greater need, have a greater need of acknowledgement than others, but it's a, something yeah. we all have starting from the, when an infant opens its eyes, it needs some acknowledgement. And if it doesn't have the proper care, that child will wither, mm -hmm. right? So it isn't just acknowledgement, they need greater care, but they starts with acknowledgement. This child exists, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, we all want to be heard. We want to know that we matter and yeah. that's acknowledgement. Absolutely. So let's let's get into uh, some more of this calm stuff. Uh, let what uh, what results can a person expect by using the calm method? Great question. What results they can expect? I've had people um, take action on something that they were initially afraid to do. Mm. For example, uh, some uh, this entrepreneur wanted to try out this new marketing strategy that she was learning to grow her audience, and there was a lot of resistance and fear around it. And, and there was these thoughts in her head, like the, the judgment, the criticism, you know, more eyes on her, you know, with growing an audience, more chance of being called out. And there's that, you know, am I a fraud, imposter syndrome. So by using the calm method, that all went away because she just proved that in step three. And she started taking action and implementing that marketing strategy. So that's just one example, M growing your business, more money, um, improved relationships with yourself first and foremost, because we are in relationship with ourselves. Probably that's the, the primary one. We're in relationships in our life, right? That's the one that dictates all others. That's right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, helping you to, to, to make a decision, right? If you're hemming and hawing over something like, I don't know what to do, you know, the calm method can help you to get that clarity and, and tap into that knowing, because we really do know. We know a lot more than we think. And, you know, it helps you to even learn how to trust yourself. Uh, I got at the, at the risk of being redundant, Nikki. I gotta say, this sounds like a very useful technique, a uh, very <laughs> valuable method. It is, Tony. It's one, you know what, with the different kinds of work that I do, the one thing that I teach every client is the calm method and tapping, because those are two, two tools that they can do on their own without me guiding them through you know, hypnosis or an NLP process. So I think that they're foundational. And, uh, well, and you know, uh, at the risk of uh, taking away from your bottom line, you just shared that with the audience, both of them. I mean, they, you, you introduced them to EFT. Obviously, they'd have to learn it with some to learn it precisely, which is yeah. not difficult. Uh, and you shared the calm method, so they don't need you anymore. No, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so you uh, you really share great value, Nikki, and I really appreciate that. And, uh, you know, we're, we're coming towards the end of our conversation. Uh, we'll have one more break before that. But uh, uh, very valuable stuff, very immediately accessible stuff. And yeah, you've only, like I said, touched on EFT, but, and anyone could go online and, and learn how to do it on YouTube. YouTube is the greatest channel ever. But, but, you, but as you just articulated, by becoming aware, starting with the calm method, all right, and then use a tool that you can use, such as EFT, start tapping on yourself, uh, you can really make a change in your life. And that might be an understatement. You can make a huge change in your life. And I want to say consistency is key. Like this is not a one and done. Like I'm going to do the calm method once. I'm going to tap once and I'm good. You know, that's the, this is that's like- the real C, That's the real C word, Nikki. That's the real C word, consistency. consistency. Yeah. Con oh boy. And I, I, I would posit this, that consistency, listen, we, you know, consistency, key success, to say, it's true. Uh, you know, progress is where it's at. That's true. But the more consistent you are, the absolute faster you will be successful and, and, and more effective in anything. Consistency is the game changer, is the factor between the person who wins and the person who comes in second, third, fourth, fifth place. Consistency. By doing things consistently, you by have, that's the way you get the best results. Absolutely. Yeah, we have to keep taking action. Yeah. Absolutely. Inspired action, right? Like purposeful action, not just because I could tell you, even in my own business, 
there's been many times where I like, I keep taking action. I keep showing up. The results aren't matching. Are they in alignment? Or are you just taking action for the sake of it, right? Uh, I don't remember who said it, but there's this, um, was this Stephen Covey, somebody who said it, they gave the analogy of the ladder. And it doesn't matter how high you climb up the ladder, if it's in the wrong spot, <laughs> if it's in the wrong place, it's right. not leading to what, what it, you it was Covey. You want to You're go. Right. It was Covey. Yeah. You got to make sure your ladder is on the in the right place. Otherwise, in the right place. You, know, you don't want to major in minor things. I think he uses that phrase. Mm. And that is a very mm. important thing that uh, that is very common. You know, oh, I did great work. Yeah, but that's not the work I wanted you to do. Exactly. <laughs> that's yeah. not the work that's not, you know, just like as a business, I'm an entrepreneur. I have people working for me. Like, I listen, I, I pay for results, not activity. All right. That's what, what I pay for. Uh, and you, uh, everyone should feel themselves to be the president of their own company. Uh, you don't want to waste your time, your efforts. Time is the most valuable thing a person has. Efforts is what you've got. You know, working on things that you either could be, you could be use your time better using elsewhere or something that you shouldn't even be working on at all. When you really think about it sometimes, often, I shouldn't even be doing this. I should do something. This, this, this is more important. Maybe this seems more urgent or easier. There's that, there's that catch. Oh, this is easier to do. Let me do it. Yeah. But I, this is yes. more, diff <laughs> this is much, is more difficult, but about a thousand times more valuable than that easy task. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, somebody else. Oh, you know, isn't it interesting how I'm remembering all these people, but not the names of those who said it. Somebody said recently that that is what alignment is. It's learning how to choose what is important over what is urgent and doing that again. And Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Nikki, I, I, I dispense with the commercial break that I was going to have because I was like, no, I'm not going to interrupt Nikki. I, great flow. I got to hear from Nikki again, Jeremy. Uh, but uh, we, so, uh, so we didn't have that commercial break. Fine. That's great. We, we are coming to the end of our discussion. Uh, and I got to say, I, I am delighted with the conversation that we've had. It's been, I, I think, very valuable. I mean, I would say a top tier from the interviews that I, all the interviews I've had, top tier uh, of the value that you've offered to the listener, immediately accessible and, and, and useful tools. Uh, and uh, and uh, they, they'd be a fool not to get a hold of you because if you if, if you think that they all you uh, listener if they or she offered you value just by this conversation imagine if you actually got in contact with or or utilized her resources which we're going to get into now uh, how can someone contact you they can find me they can visit my website which is my name nikki ganjemi.com that's two k's in nikki. that's two k's mm -hmm. And right on my website, they can get the Calm Method, the free guide. There you go. So it's, not, it's not even something you can hear. It's you, you get the free guide from Nikki's website. That's N-I-K-K-I-G-A-N-G-E-M-I.com. Go there and get her free guide to the Calm Method. Uh, and what else? What else going on, Nikki? They can find me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. They can either by my name, Nikki Ganjemi, or at Mindful Matters, LLC. That's the company name. And I've got a ton of free resources. They can go to my YouTube channel, lots of video trainings on all things mindset and transformation. Great stuff. Uh, you got any final remarks for the audience, Nikki? Final remarks. Um, get comfortable with tuning inside of you and trusting yourself because you are your own greatest resource and you you know so much more than you think and when you learn how to tap into you and take action from there life is going to change in a positive way for you fantastic you know when i first met you an hour ago i said to you, we'll <laughs> see how we'll see how the interview goes you know and i'll see if i can get you out on the hour i'm gonna get you out on the hour but uh, the interview went longer than I typically want because you're that great of a person and that's the great stuff that, that you shared and how the discussion, the conversation went organically. You're a primo guest. Uh, this has been quite wonderful, a delight for me to meet you. Uh, and I, I thank you very much. I thank you for offering that stuff to the audience. And I wanna say that uh, they should, I recommend you wholeheartedly. And I want to tell the audience that, um, we're all responsible for ourselves. 
and we could all use a little help. With that, thank you very much, Nikki again, Jemmy, and thank you for listening. We'll see you at the next episode of the Self-Help Coaching Podcast. Thank you for tuning in to the Self-Help Coaching Podcast, where insights, attitudes, and methods for success get illuminated. Learn what leaders and change workers have done and are doing now to create magnificent futures. Remember to visit our website at self-helpcoaching.com and enjoy even more great episodes like this one. Again, while you're here, subscribe to us via your favorite network. We look forward to seeing you next time on the Self-Help Coaching Podcast.